Which first round selections from the 2023 NFL Draft are most likely to be busts? Let's talk about it. The first name on this list is Will Anderson Jr. out of Alabama who went third overall to the Houston Texans. And we know this may cause some eye rolls because he's got a lot of hype coming out of college, a lot of production, and some people are comparing him to guys like Von Miller or Khalil Mack. And while we don't feel like he's that good, we do think he's a very good pass rusher, similar to Josh Allen from Jacksonville. The reason he's number one on this list and maybe even the highest chance overall is because of what Houston gave up to get him. It was a ridiculous trade package to go up and get a non-quarterback. And look, they could have gotten a decent pass rusher if they stayed put. That may not be that far behind what Will Anderson will give a team. So this is not much to do with the player and much more to do with the draft slot and everything that Houston gave up to get him. The only other comp we can think of as far as draft capital to get a pass rusher is when the Saints gave up a first, an extra first to get Marcus Davenport. And it doesn't feel like he lived up to that. And that was nowhere near what Houston gave up. Someone that we were definitely not high on. And we actually had a much lower grade than anyone seemed to in Tyree Wilson. But this is a twofold reasoning because first... We just feel he wasn't worth this high of a pick. And second, the Raiders drafting him when they had been unable to develop any kind of player in recent memory besides Max Crosby leads us to believe that Tyree Wilson is not going to an environment where he's going to thrive and develop the way you would want from someone with his size and strength. The Raiders are a mess. They ignored bigger needs and the expectations for Tyree Wilson are now going to be through the roof considering they passed on offensive linemen as well as defensive back to draft him. And we feel like he will not live up to those expectations and maybe nothing more than an average to slightly above average pass rusher that was taken in the top 10. It's nothing to do with the player. It's where to do with the draft situation. And that's Jameer Gibbs. The Lions taking him as high as they did is kind of insane. And we know that some people are trying to rationalize it. But look, Gibbs is undersized. We didn't knock him for that because we think he does have the ability to be a major difference maker at the NFL level. But for a guy that we don't expect to see 200 plus carries and will have to get his touches in a combination of air and pass, and as a player that we feel like doesn't push the needle forward for the Lions, he's got an insane amount of expectations. And in, in a league and in recent history where first round running backs in general don't really seem to live up to the hype, especially when you take one in the top 15, Gibbs is being set up for failure and we feel like... The Lions had the leading rusher touchdown-wise in Jamal Williams picking up late in free agency and paying him almost nothing and came away from that feeling like they needed to spend a very high draft pick on Jameer Gibbs when Christian Gonzalez was there and we just it wasn't a very sensical pick. Now granted they were very excited and he may work out very well but we don't see him pushing the needle and in general when you find so much value in running backs and you look how many fell in this draft that were worth day two picks, it makes it even more difficult to explain this selection for the Lions. The fourth name on our list is perhaps the most puzzling pick in the whole first round, and that's Will McDonald to the New York Jets. We had him as a second round graded player similar to Boye Mafe last year, and we know he snuck into the late first for some mocks, although we didn't really see that kind of potential, but in no way was he a top 15 player like the Jets made him. This was a total panic pick, missing out on Broderick Jones thanks to Bill Belichick, but there was still other offensive linemen that could have been taken here and been good picks. Instead, they went with a pass rusher that doesn't seem like he's going to be someone that gets the first round production, and we feel like there was better, much better pass rushers available, and that if they really wanted Will McDonald, they could have traded down, picked up some more draft picks, and selected him. Now he gets some pretty high expectations, and we wouldn't be surprised if in five years he's someone that... It's just kind of forgotten about and is not a super special pass rusher. Maybe he gets five sacks a season. Maybe he approaches 10 one year, but this is way too high for him. And lastly, we had a pretty strong debate between Emmanuel Forbes and Jack Campbell. And we ended up going with Jack Campbell solely because the linebackers in general fell very far. And we know Detroit could not have predicted this, but we didn't see Jack Campbell as a first round anywhere. And we didn't have a first round grade on him. His athleticism is limited as far as speed goes. He has good short area quickness, but we do have concerns about him being able to cover the modern day tight ends and running backs just because shifty, they're fast, and Jack Campbell isn't really either of those. That being said, he should be a fine pro. We just don't see him as being a first round worthy draft pick. Very similar to how someone like Zayvon Collins has turned out or Jamin Davis. Not the same player, but similar to like you kind of forget that they're first rounders and that they've been unspectacular but not horrible and we feel like Jack Campbell has a higher chance than Forbes to be nothing special and we like Drew Sanders pick and Trenton Simpson more in the third 
versus someone like Campbell in the first.